the hardest things to do with technology, uh, not that they're impossible, but the hardest thing to do with technology have to do with, uh, if you like, motor uh, sensory perception challenges. Those are actually, now we've made progress on those, by the way. So, you know, uh, humanoid robots have made huge progress. Our ability to sense environments have made huge progress. But we have not made anywhere near as much progress on that as we've made in the more reasoning thinking tasks, the knowledge work. And the reason why those two differences are interesting is that, so I'll stay with the, the called the physical sensory perception end of that spectrum. You end up still needing to actually build machines that actually cost money, that have arms and legs and whatever uh, uh, physical things that will move things around. Uh, it's also the place where there's, there'll be an abundance of human labor available. Uh, and so the combination of the costs, not so much progress, and the availability of human labor will probably mean that we'll see less automation happen there because there's always going to be an alternative. Whereas if you go to the other end of the spectrum, where it's mostly thinking work, the algorithm that, that does medical diagnosis or pattern recognition or image recognition is essentially an algorithm. There's no moving parts, so to speak. So the co economics of that are very, very low. And by the way, we've made more progress there in the last five years than we've made in the last 50 with machine learning and deep learning. And by the way, that's where the labor and the skills are in short supply. So when you put the technology and the labor economics that go with it, uh, which is the shortage, you're likely to see more of it actually being applied there. If you look at a sector like manufacturing, for example, you know, I'll pick a period, 2000, 2008, uh, 2008 just because that was the start of the recession. Uh, in that period, much of the conversation we had about, you know, the 5.8 million jobs we lost in, in manufacturing was always a conversation about offshoring. Now when we look back, uh, and various economists have different estimates of this, we have our own, but for the most part, roughly about 20% of the jobs lost in that period were in fact due to offshoring. The rest was a combination of technology-driven automation as well as shortfalls in demand. At some level, when you've got economies like the United States where something like 60% you know, of our GDP growth comes from household and, you know, and, and consumer consumption and spending, it's gonna be important for people to be able to consume uh, and spend to drive GDP. So if people aren't earning anything because they're not working, whatever the case may be, what happens to that? So I think this question of automation is actually a bigger deal. And I think we got distracted a little bit with the offshoring question. Now, of course, that's, that's real. But the bigger question is what happens to work? <laughs>